In this series, we're going to be looking at signing in with Google Authentication. And we're going to be using the Google Client that we'll download later on to do this. Now, we're going to be building uh, this working with a database. So what we'll do is, I'll demonstrate this in a moment, we'll be signing in. This will then sign us in with our selected Google account. It will store our details in the database, so at least then you have a record to work with if you need to work with one in your application. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's load up MySQL so we can see what details are actually in the database here. So I'll just sign in as usual. Now I'm using a database called Website. Now, if I do a show tables, you can see that we've got this Google users table. Now, the Google users table contains all of the user details, of the users that have signed in. So let's describe this. So we've got a, an ID, a Google ID and an email. Now, after you finish watching this video or this series, you may want to go ahead and add more fields here, and that's fine. Once a user signed in, you can use their Google ID to store different details. But what we're going to be getting from Google is obviously the Google ID, and we'll also, also get the user's email address as well. Now, we will also get information back like whether the email address has been verified by Google and this makes it really easy to work out whether you have a valid email address on your hands which is really useful when you're working with sending email within your application. So let's look at uh, the data that's inside here. Okay so you can see that we've got an empty set here. So let's go ahead and sign in with Google and see how this works. Now, this link is generated because I'm obviously currently not signed in. If you look at the very bottom of this video now, you can see that there's a long uh, sort of query string that's been generated here. So if I view the page source, you can see that that's this. So we'll be talking about that later and how that's generated. So if I click sign in with Google, we're transferred over to the account chooser. And this will let me choose one of my Google accounts that I have available. So I'm just going to be working with this one here. I'm going to click on this and it's going to ask me for specific permission. Now I've already authenticated with this account on this particular domain, which is just on localhost. So at the moment it's only asking me that uh, we want to have offline access. Now, uh, if you were coming to this as a first time user, you would see things like access profile information, which technically we can. We can set the level or the scope of information that we want to access, but we're just going to be accessing the email address because really you don't, you shouldn't really need to access too much more than this. Because once a user is registered on your website, you can then go and ask them for their name and other information. So I'm going to accept this and I'll be transferred back to my app and it now says you are logged in. So there's a uh, functionality within the uh, Google client library that allows us to check whether we're logged in or not. So now what I'm going to do is check in the terminal and re issue the uh, select star command again. And you can see that this has actually stored my Google ID and my email. Now if I log out and log back in again, you can see that we don't actually have a duplicate record. So we're going to make this a unique field. So it will only update, uh, well, it won't update this if it already exists. Now what we can do is we can sign in with a different account. And you'll see that's been added. So we'll be creating this um, with a uh, Google Auth class, a database class, which we'll inject into the Google Auth class, and we'll create this in a really nice reusable way. So now that we've seen how this works, let's go ahead and set everything up that we need before we go and get started on building any code. 